All right, we're good. Be like, uh, busting with the boys. Bussin' with the boys. Bro. Welcome to another episode of Bussin' with the Boys. If you are watching on YouTube right now, make sure you are subscribed to the boys. I think we are at 496,000 subscribers. We are getting close. 497. 497. We're getting close to 500,000. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the boys. And if you have to rally the troops, get in the group chat. Hey, fellas, make sure we get these boys to 500,000. This episode is brought to you by... The one, the only, the Chevy Silverado. Bustin' with the Boys is a Chevy truck podcast. The greatest trucks ever built, and our good friends at Chevrolet have been a big part of the Bustin' family and even our personal lives. The Chevy Silverado is a longtime awesome partner of the show, a truck with commanding and unstoppable grit, legendary capability, and dependability as well. Find out for yourself, like so many of the boys, head to Chevy.com to check out all the Chevy truck grit and build your own Silverado. And for do-it-yourself pro uh, projects, uh, Road trips, off-road adventures to tailgates, whatever your thing is, it all starts with the Chevy truck. You know your boy has the ZR2. It is it is outstanding, and especially the interior. Garrett and I, we just did a little we did a little ad last week for Chevy and we were going through my interior and that thing. The Chevy truck is 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 built to last. Um I'm your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor. He's still in uh he's still in Canada. I hope he's surviving out there. I hope he's thriving. Um before we get started, I just wanna I just wanna throw some positivity around. All the boys in the back, Jack, social media, all of our following. I'm sitting there looking at it. If you if you look at YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, I don't know about Facebook. I don't really get on Facebook. But we're at over 1.5 million followers slash, slash subscribers. Um, JP, your vlogs recently have been fucking amazing. Sure, I, I'm sure you play a hand in helping create some. Your JP, the making the bus scenes. If you guys haven't watched bus scenes, um, check out our YouTube channel look at bus scenes. It's a uh, kind of a little content piece that JP is running with and he's having a good time where he shoots scenes that happen around the bus, around our life of busing with the boys. And he throws in his, his little spin. He gets in front of the green screen. He breaks down things from his perspective. Um, I was diving in a little bit last week just to see, cause you throw your opinions in there as well. You like have some fun with it. Uh, but for everybody, who is a fan of the show, a fan of the brand, check out bus scenes. We also have under the hood. The vlogs have been uh, all time. Jack excited for the vlog coming out of Vegas. Um, but yeah, I want to throw around some good news. If you're listening right now, throw some positivity to somebody, whether you're driving to work, whether you're at home, whether you're around the boys, it doesn't matter. Throw somebody a compliment. Let's bring the good vibes this week. Uh, you guys have a good 4th of July. You guys have a good break. The shop was shut down. What Wednesday through uh, yesterday. You guys get out, have some fun. I know Jackie boy, he was down in the Panama City, yeah? Panama City, man. Talking on last week's episode, you might find yourself, you might find some stragglers. Yeah, it went the opposite way. It was 10 guys, uh, zero bitches. And it was awesome. <laughs> yes, It's good man. to get back with your boys and just hang out at the beach. We had our, a buddy's house that was right on the water, so haven't really stayed at too many spots or like directly on the beach. And that is, you really can't beat it. It was just unmatched energy. Everyone's having a good time. Uh, Panama city does fourth of July, right? They, they know how to celebrate America. So I was really happy to be down there. Happy to be back. Dude. Um, one thing we miss in good old God's country of Bonterre, Missouri, and it's water. Seeing you guys, I saw Garrett, he was on the water. You were on the water. JP, you were on the water. Mitch, sure. I don't know if you guys got on the water over the weekend. No, we were hanging out together. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys had a little house party. I see you having the rest of those, uh, the beer games championship of the world, the massive cooler of beer we still had left. By the way, again, just a reminder for everybody though, that content comes out July 23rd, 24th, I believe 22nd, 23rd, one of, one of those three dates. Um, but one thing we miss in Bon Terrace is some water. It is so fucking hot outside and humid cornhole you're right sherm i didn't i didn't take home the cornhole trophy 
uh, we got bounced within three games. We lost the first round. It was double elimination. We won the, we won one game in the loser bracket, then got bounced. Um, there's a big water slide there. Rue had her first water slide experience. It was all time. She had her first uh, firework experience. She was holding the sparkler. We were holding the sparkler together. But my big shout out from 4th of July weekend goes to the fire we had on the last day. We had a fire out at this farm. Dude, we were staying on this badass farm. And you guys know, every time I talk about going back to Bonterra, I don't always have the most positive things to say. I'm proud of where I'm from. But going back, it's like the wife, she, you know, we, we talk about going back. We usually stay with my boy, Nick. We, we always feel like we're intruding on somebody when we go. Um, not a lot of hotel selection. But this last time we went, this past weekend, um, we got this Airbnb, this farmhouse that sits on 200 plus acres. And it has foundation like stone that is still there from 1832. And my boy, Scott, who owns the whole farm, who owns the place and everything else, like they do a really good job theming it up. Like the Civil War era back in the 1800s or early 1900s, like a lot of small details, like in the farmhouse to where it was so badass because you wake up in the morning, you go outside. We had, there was awesome landscape, a lot of farmland that you're looking at. You're making breakfast. There's no TV on the first floor at all. You're making breakfast in the kitchen area. A lot of light inside. Like you go out the golden hour out there in Missouri. Like I had a new appreciation for being back home because I've been out there b before, but it was only to shoot it at Tannerite. You guys know Tannerite where you explode. I think we were blowing up a boat like a few years ago. That was the only time I had been on this property and we went and stayed on it. It was incredible to where it's like, that's the only thing I'm going to be doing when I go back to Missouri. I actually want to host you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm confident enough to host friends and people in my circle back in Missouri at this spot. That is how prime it is. It, it was so fun. Uh, it was a good little getaway. It felt like a real vacation just being out in the, on the farmland and stuff like riding the ATVs, riding four wheelers, um, making s'mores. Rue had her first s'more. Shout out s'mores. I know we did shout out no free shout out in the episode with Quentin Nelson. That's a, uh, that's a fun conversation with all pro, uh, just probably future hall of fame regard from the Colts. Uh, we did shout out no free shout out, but I do want to give a special shout out to s'mores. And I was thinking about s'mores and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but making a s'more, there's only one way to have that flavor. And it is by just the original s'more itself. They try to recreate it into pop tarts. They try to recreate it into other things and it never hits the same. But when you have a, an old fashioned s'more, like it is the best. It's such like a nostalgic perspective. Yeah, good up. Such a nostalgic perspective. You're sitting around the fire. You're hearing the crackling of the fire going on and you're making s'mores with everybody. Like it is, there's nothing like it. And I also came accustomed to putting a Reese's cup on the s'more, which is a nice yes. little flavor. But I'll say this for Reese's. This is, this is free. This first one's for free. They need to make a Reese's style size for the s'more because when you get the smaller cup it's not it doesn't cover it like a, a hershey's bar will it's kind of smaller to where you have the corners uh the corners really exposed on the graham cracker but when you get to that middle when you get to the good bites the reese's cup goes did you use the normal size one or like the tiny cups i used the normal size and reese's. it still didn't have enough yeah yeah it still didn't have enough i was gonna say that's a pro move because your options are the thins like you were just saying sherm you have thins you have the regular size and then you have like they're making like these double stuff like the fatter ones but nothing uh, wide enough no pause nothing wide enough to fit on a good graham cracker so that would be i think that's a move that reese's needs to make is making like a uh, square a s'more compatible yeah like a square reese's cup do you like your uh marshmallow burnt or do you like it well done. I'm glad you asked that question, Garrett. Yeah. So my method for the s'more is, number one, if you have yourself a good s'more marshmallow, not like the jumbo ones, not the regular marshmallows, one that says s'more to where it's a little flatter, it, go, it works with the graham cracker and the Hershey's bar. You go about 15 seconds right at the top of the flame, 15 seconds on each side to where you get a nice light brown coating, Okay. And then your, th your next flip where you go on the original side, you want it to catch fire. You want your s'more to catch fire and not sit there in flames. You let it catch fire. You calmly bring it back. You give a nice hawk to it, to it and blow it out. And that is 
the prime marshmallow for a s'more. That is my method. Just because like if you just get the golden brown on each side and go, it's still got a little um uh, it's still got a little like harder fluff in the middle. You don't get it all the way through. You want what JP was saying, you want that gooey, that ooey gooey going out on all mm-hmm. sides to where you bite a little bit of the marshmallow Coming with a out. little bit of crisp on it. My mouth's watering talking about it. But that is how you do a marshmallow right for a s'more. I agree. Does anybody have like a a different opinion? I won't say a wrong opinion. I'll just say a different opinion or a different approach to making the perfect marshmallow. I go golden everywhere. You just go golden everywhere. You don't want it to catch fire. You don't want any black on it. Yeah, no, I I want straight. I don't want it to be burnt and crispy. I'm I'm good with just a golden brown all around. Now, uh, just to correct you, I'm not trying to burn it and make it all crispy. You just want that flash fire on it, and then you blow it out to where it's got a nice little black crisp to it. Yeah, I don't. I don't not like that. Charles in that video. Right, not like Charles. In that, are you talking about when she caught it? That's when you catch a fire way too early. She was like, "Hey, take a <laughs> take a video of me pulling it out and blowing it off." And right when she put it in, it caught way too much fire. She's like, "Oh shit!" And ends up starting to like blow, huff and puff, and blow it all away. Um, but that's not how you want to do. It. You do not want to catch fire too early. You want a good thirty seconds of roasting, fifteen on each side. Again, a golden brown. Get the little light flash fry at the end. Um, but yeah, dude, we had a good time out in Missouri. It's I'm I'm actually when I plan a trip to go back, I will actually be excited to plan a trip to go back. Outside of just going back to visit my dad and my brothers and figuring out how you kind of check all the boxes when you go home, I would actually be excited to go spend a few days, bring some of the fellas. Um, it's a cool spot. Before, it is a fucking cool spot. Before you bring us out there, is the guy willing to install a pool above ground, in ground, some sort of water? Above ground's a vibe. Above ground is a vibe. Above ground is a vibe. I don't know if he'd be willing to put a pool in that farmland. However, we do need to find a source of water because, again, I feel like that is the one thing a sprinkler. we are missing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe <laughs> it's just a sprinkler. <laughs> maybe a slip and slide. You I find was a hill say out there, build slide. a little slip and slide. It might be a little rocky out there. Um, but it was a it was a great trip, nonetheless. Other things that were happening over the weekend. You saw Dave Portnoy, poor old Dave Portnoy, putting a hammer to the fence, trying to build a fence for Miss Peaches. I don't know why anybody would expect anything else out of Dave. I mean, he's a few years away from being in a home himself, a senior living area out there in Nantucket. I'm sure Gaz will probably put him in that home when the time comes. Uh, But this is not like a, like Dave is a guy's guy, but he's not a man's man. That sounds a little confusing. But you know when you're like, that guy is a man. He's a man's man, whether he's an outdoorsman, he builds stuff around the house. I am not in that world. I'm not a man's man. I like to attempt to do new things, to become more of a man. But I'm more of just a guy's guy. He's a guy's guy. He's a guy that lives in the AC. He sits out by his pool. He sits out by the water. Um, And you got to remember, like this guy, he is a pioneer in the media space. Like one of the greatest creators of our generation i will say that and throw him some flowers of building barstool sports but he made his hay off the newspapers and the blogging and everything else on the keyboard making videos this is not this is not a man's man that we're dealing with so credit to him for trying it and videoing it i'm you know listen i can't do i would sound ridiculous to say i can do shit like that too because i can't build for shit um but we're all trying but poor dave like (laughs) Look at him. Just he, trying to get a nail, like zero power behind that hammer. He's a city boy blogger. Yeah, yeah. He's a city boy <laughs> blogger, man. You can't expect anything out of him to build this. He's a pizza boy. He's a pizza boy through and through. His technique is rough. He's holding the hammer up by the head of it. And that nail. Yeah, he's got the shoulder problems. He the can't nail lift the hammer. is way too big for what he's trying to do. When he like pulls it back to look to see if it's going through. And what's so funny it. about it too is he is he puts on the, the safety glasses with it. That's so funny. Anybody watching uh, House of Dragon? House of the Dragon. Yes. Fire episode this past week. We won't talk too much about it because we don't want to give throw spoilers out there. I no. know people get a little weird about the spoilers. Unless we were a House of Dragon first show, I don't think we should talk about everything that happened. But one of the best episodes in the Game of Thrones era. Yeah. Yeah, people are saying better than... I, I know not everybody's caught up on the second season, but did y'all watch the first season? 
A House of the Dragon? Okay. Okay. We're watching it. Better than Battle of the Bastards in Game of Thrones. That's what uh, people are on, saying. Hang on. I don't know about saying. that. Better than Battle of the Bastards? That was a two-part little series. Battle of the Bastards was split into two episodes, wasn't it? Yeah. It was yeah. like the final two episodes of season six, I think. I think the full battle sequence was in one episode, but there was like three episodes leading up to it. And I think what this episode did so well, no spoilers, is you have the lead up, like a good 40 minute lead up, and mm. then just 15 straight minutes of some of the best Carnage. Game of Thrones content. Yeah. It was wild. You got dragons fighting. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. You got people dying. People, yes. Big people dying. No spoilers. No spoilers. But to me, the reason it wouldn't pass like a battle of the bastards is because you don't have an antagonist, like somebody you truly hate. Just not not like Aegon, bro. Aegon's not at that level. Nobody from Team Green is at that level of, uh, what was it, Bolton? Yeah, yeah. Ramsey, Ramsey. Bolton. Like, you hate you the wanted worst. the worst things to happen to that guy and they fed him to the dogs like they did it right when they killed him there's nobody like a joffrey or a ramsey bolton right now in house of dragon i think the diehard house of the dragon fans would fight back they'd push back and say sir Kristen cole is getting there even right. more than aemon people don't like uh, sir yeah that's cole. fair in the in the realm of house of the dragon yeah but game of thrones He's not flirting at all with Joffrey or Ramsey Bolton right now. That would be my take. That would be my take for the. I, I'm I'm into the series. Like I love the series. And last night, like it was, I think on IMDb already, it's like a nine point seven episode. Like yeah. it's a great episode. But, and I can agree with the characters. It's not a watered down version, mm -hmm. but you can tell that this isn't going to be like a what was it? Eight seasons was Game of Thrones. Yeah, this isn't going to be eight seasons. So it's a bit more condensed there's not as much fleshing out of the characters yeah but there's some baddies in there there's some baddies i did some character comparisons of the bus no oh yeah who, yeah, who yeah. you got who you got compared to who and this isn't like this is all house of the dragon or are you talking game of thrones world this is house of the dragon okay and this isn't when i compare y'all to somebody it's not because of what they do in the show it's just like their personality okay but I think Jack is so Aemon Targaryen, it's not even funny. In a good way. I can see that. Prince Aemon. Yeah, since you guys don't watch, you guys are just going to be sitting there like, what are these guys He's Here, about? I'll gas you up. He's got the biggest, baddest dragon. He's got an eye patch. Oh, it's the guy from the first season who is... Got his eye yopped out. Yeah, I, I don't think I know what you're talking about. He's got a sick scar. He's a recluse. Yeah, very... Uh... Lays low, very yeah. introverted style. But when he attacks, you know. Oh yeah, I got Taylor as uh, Prince Damon. I could see that when he's going rogue. Yeah, like when he's going nuts. Yes, I could see that. The good and the bad. Yeah, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. JP King Viserys, just steady, dude. JP's wait, wait, steady. wait, wait, King Viserys. Yeah, season one. Yeah, yeah, season one <laughs> before he croaks. Damn, no. why you gotta do my man JP like that? Wait, you, oh, you, before he croaks. Yeah, before he okay, croaks. Before he gets He's any steady. of the bad. Okay, all right. You're talking He's, prime. You're talking prime. Prime the series. Okay. That's JP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's more of a compliment. I thought all I'm thinking of is the, the bed written. <laughs> like, who you got Mitch as? Oh, who was Mitch? Or who do you have me as? I have you as Sir Chris and Cole. That's a bad guy. He has his moments, so. though. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's kind of He tough. stands on business. I feel like I would fall in line with, uh, what is it, Prince Jacaris? Is oh, like, Jace? Yeah, yeah, Jace. I could see that. Where he's kind of like Adam, and he's wanting to like join the fight. He has his own little dragon, but they kind of put him to the side. But he seems like he's like, he's about the war. He's about helping. Like He seems like he'll be a decent little asset. Yeah. I have, uh, I have Mitch as King Aegon II. Remind me of him. He's he's going up against Rhaenyra. He's the other oh king. in this past episode. Yeah. <laughs> you have him as Aegon. Not for anything that like. Well, there ain't no other. <laughs> there ain't there ain't beating around the bush with that one. No, that's, that's a tough a look, thing. Mitch. He's the king. Oh, he's the one that just fell into it. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, he didn't fall into it. Birthright. They, got, they said, uh, what, what was the what was the quote last night where she basically told him, you need to do what you were put on the throne to do. Nothing. Let everybody else handle the business. Everything Damn, before that. Every, no, everything before that with Mitch, though. <laughs> In the season. Mitch, I'm sorry. No player audience watches House of Dragon because I'm super into House of Dragon. Um, something I got reminded of, and Garrett JP, I feel like this is this is with you guys. But over the weekend, like I've I've done a couple. I did a reel. I did a TikTok. I think with like Zach Bryan's music. I tweeted about it for the Fourth of July on Zach Bryan's album releasing for the Fourth of July. Basically, like how great of a day it's going to be. And it seems like there's this little hater cult building up against Zach Bryan. Like to where it feels like back when I was telling you guys uh, this before the show, where it feels a little bit like a buildup that Nickelback's getting, where they say every song sounds the same. Why do people like Zach Bryan? It made me sit back and I'm listening to his new album. And it, it almost doesn't matter if every song sounded the same. Like the nostalgia and perspective that you get listening to Zach Bryan music and the camaraderie and relatability to everything, it doesn't... To me, it doesn't matter. I don't know why he's garnering, starting to get a little, I feel like there's a little haters club building up. Have you seen it? Yeah, I think a lot of those haters live in like deep in the music industry, music industry, deep state. Because I saw a guy talking about, man, like Zach Bryan is good, but if he just spent more time on producing his music and hiring somebody that will like actually give him, I kind of interpret it as like, Hey, if you get with a radio producer, you'll get like a radio hit and it'll sound whatever. I'm like, dude, the exact reason people love Zach Bryan is the fact that he will put out an album in three weeks and it's not highly produced. And it's truly him and his team that he's had with him since he came back from the war. And it's like, to me, he's just, he's the most authentic artist we have right now. That's, that's blown up. There's a lot that are out there, but yeah. Well, and to add to that, the authenticity, the reason he blew up was he put a video up on Twitter of him sitting on a bucket, sweating balls, singing yeah. Godspeed. And it blew up. And everyone loved that. But if you do listen to his stuff, it does... You can hear it get better produced. But JP is right. Like People are wanting it to sound like, you know, the pop country shit. And that's just not him. But... If you listen to the words that he writes, he's an insane writer. Like he did that poem at the beginning of the, um, the a beginning album, of the album. It's incredible. And it's incredible. Yeah, he has a lot of like good writing skills. And yeah, he's got what's, a what's voice it called? Lucky. Yeah, something the like lucky that. Poem? Lucky poem yeah. or something. But he has a a very distinct voice. So yeah, of course it's going to sound the same. Like it's him every time, and. People go to certain restaurants to get one meal from there. So it's the same thing. You're going to go listen to him because you want that sound. Yeah. I, I don't Haters see how are gonna any, hate, but... yeah, people are going to hate no matter what. Because probably because he's so massive. It's more of like not necessarily hating him. It's hating that how much fandom and popularity that everybody expresses for him, I yeah. guess. But there's find me somebody who would sit around the fire, play his music and not enjoy well, and the he's entire done, night. He's done a good job of being true to himself but i think he's such a fan of other musicians when he collabs with them it's not for like a this will get me on the charts it's like i truly like this person's music i want to mm. collab with him like he had john mayer come play guitar he even have him sing on that song like to me that's kind of crazy that you couldn't i would have liked to have him at least sing a little bit of the chorus but like he has a song with bruce springsteen it's like yeah. he enjoys those people and he's collabing with them it's not like not throwing shade, but it's not like Post Malone and Morgan Wallen. Oh, you throwing shade? I mean, yes, <laughs> oh, JP, that, you got something to say about Post Malone? I think and that's Wallen? where the people draw the line. Is like you have that, and then you have like there's those are the two opposite sides of country music. Mm-hmm. You got some on. Uh, you got some you want to say about Morgan Wallen, JP? You got some you want to get off your chest? <laughs> no, I mean I, I don't. Morgan Wallen, he makes bangers, but does make bangers there will be another morgan wallen in however many years in 20 years what yeah there is his name's red fern look look him up he sounds the exact same red fern but red fern yeah I'm a, I'm a, all right mitch 
<laughs> though the craziest thing I saw in Zach Bryan though, somebody was like, he could be even bigger. I'm like, the goal as an artist, I would assume, is to sell out stadiums, and <laughs> Zach Bryan is selling out stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, what more do you want him to do? Zach, we love you. We want you on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on the bus. Maybe we get Brianna on first. Yeah. He was just here. Who was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, because you hit up that concert. I know, bro. I know. Should we talk about uh, getting a haircut? Your boy actually needs one. Um, get ready because this month's Sport Clips Haircuts is taking their MVP haircut experience to the ultimate level. Throughout the month of July, uh, you get to relax twice and pay once. That's because the ultimate MVP is the same price as the standard MVP. Also, it's just in time to beat the heat. The refreshing chilled towel is back. That means you get double the hot or chilled towel action, double the sudsy satisfaction of, a mas of massaging shampoos and conditioning treatment. And if they find a way to double the sports on their screens, they would double that. Uh, when it comes to your hair, go to the specialists who are trained in men's hair. Your boy will your boy will be hitting up a sport clips this week because I've not gotten cut. I've not gotten the fresh fade in like three weeks. Uh, sport clips. It is a game changer and it's valid at participating locations. And this offer for the ultimate MVP experience um, ends on July 31st, 2024. That's this month, boys. That is this month. Fan questions. I actually came across a few. And by, and by the way, people... Talk about uh, college football 25 coming out. Are we going to be running a massive dynasty? You're yeah. goddamn right we are. Yeah. However many users we can have, I believe it's 32. We will be filling out a dynasty, whether we're incorporating fans, incorporating people in our circle, mm. but we'll get a full 32 team dynasty going. If it goes higher than that, even better. But we will be doing that. We will be streaming games. We will be doing competitions, but the boys will be very immersed in, in the college football 25 video game just to address those fan questions where people are like are you guys going to be streaming are you guys going to be doing a massive dynasty yes and you will have your chance to play with the boys because we're going to be having a lot of fun this year uh with college football as nebraska makes a name for themselves this year but i have one jack as you pull them up too uh, from the boy at alex underscore d michelle which House of Dragons character would I be? I, I don't know why. I just literally, I've, I've went through that part. Alex, shout out to you for the question. Your boy thinks Prince Jacaris. Jacaris? Jacaris? I apologize. I already run that question. The second one comes from at Timothy Fax. Would you be open to an HQ in Nashville for Barstool? I think the boys would. I think if there were there was other talent on the roster that was around and in Nashville, I think we'd very much be up for pioneering an HQ, a Barstool HQ here in Nashville. It is a it is a a nice gateway to the South, gateway to the SEC. You get a lot. Of, you got the uh, the Barstool bar that is very prosperous. It seems like here people are embedded a lot more in Barstool than they were in the last several years here. So I think an HQ in Nashville would be dope. And yes, we would definitely be open to it. Our contract is up in February. <clears throat> um, third one comes from at Belding Cameron. Best memories from our 4th of July's. What is a, what is a quality memory that we've all had with 4th of July? The one that comes to mind for myself is we built a sparkler bomb in high school. I'm talking... 300 to 400 of those little metal sparklers. We use the black uh, electrical tape, rolls and rolls and rolls to compact it in. And then you leave one out as like the wick. And it set off so loudly. Car alarms went off. The police came because they had a disturbance on their little monitor that something that measured over a stick of dynamite went off. Boys didn't get in trouble, but... That is my fondest 4th of July memory. When your boy was young too, like blowing up slugs. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Putting a little M90 under a slug that you'd find somewhere around the house, like under a board. I remember telling Cody like, hey, if you, you know those little tyke uh, basketball goals that you could you can lift up, pull apart. I had this yellow thing. and I, I For some reason I said like, you can hear something really clearly like through this. And as he went, I like held it in my hand. And I went in there and it popped and fucking... That was not a good, yeah, that was a bully moment, but not a good result. Old man, oh, old man came out and 
tan my ass, dude. Fucking have me grabbed by the neck, fucking. <laughs> Some delinquent kid shit, dude. Blowing up action figures. You were like the guy from Toy Story. Sid. Sid, there's so yeah, I mean he had some good some good ideas. I definitely tried strapping rockets to him, to action figures. My dad one time we went over to my uncle Troy's and in the the gravel driveway we just poured out a bunch of gasoline, lit up, <laughs> lit, lit the lit the gasoline on fire. So it's just this row of fire, and then we just throw in bottle rockets, Roman candles, and you just got to run and like survive. Do y'all remember the ones that have the army man on it? The fireworks that like when they explode and it parachute down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the old parachute That's money. Dude, I've been hit in the chest from me to you with a parachute. With a parachute. Because we'd have like uh Roman, firework wars. Yeah, the Roman candle wars. Roman candles. Somebody for whatever reason thought a parachute would be funny. And from me to you smoked me in the chest. Oh. It really yes. wasn't that bad. I was once it happened, like I'm thinking, I just I'm I'm dying. Like a hole just went through my body. But yeah, I caught a parachute right to the chest. Anyone else? Mine's on uh, mine's on a specific memory, but I guess kind of like tied into a shout out because this week in Panama City we had neighbors and one of the it was like a dad and he bought like six thousand dollars worth of fireworks. And I always appreciate somebody who plans ahead, buys a ton of whatever, if it's just like huge artillery shells or just all the mixture of them and then gets the whole community right. And it's like they took it upon themselves to make sure that we're going to have the best night ever. So I always really respect anybody who does the planning, takes a lot of time and money especially and buys all those fireworks because it just promotes like such a great night for for everybody for the kids for the for the adults and everyone in between so just like have to shout out anybody who's out there putting in the work to make sure that the neighborhood has just an awesome show shout out the howards that was the howards for us growing up I got a shout out. Quick this is actually for mitch just a general shout out so fourth of july and this weekend mitch killed it Hosted a 4th of July party, invited me and the wife, hosted a beer pong tournament. Did you win? No, we didn't end up finishing it. But you were still in it. Yeah. Yeah. Mitch made the finals. I got bounced in the quarters. Why didn't you end up finishing it? Because we had to go downtown and push fireworks. Ah. But he killed it on hosting. Later on Sunday, I locked myself out of the shop. Keys, phone, wallet, everything on my desk. Who came (laughs) to unlock it for me? Mitch. That boy, Mitch. Shout out, boy Mitch, boy dude. Hey, how are the uh, Nashville fireworks? Because people say that the city of Nashville spends the most of anywhere in the country. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's true. That's what I was. Could gonna, be New York. That's but, what I was going to shout out was the the fireworks show of Nashville. No. It was insane. Like we were right near the river, and like it looked sick from our vantage point. But then, like I've seen videos of like people on top of like old red and stuff, and it looks even crazier because you you can see more of it. But the my my one buddy was telling me that all of the wicks of the fireworks combined was twenty miles long, which is like an insane stat. But the fireworks there were just absolutely absurd, and like the the finale, like it's one of those things where you didn't think it could get any louder, but it just continued to get more and more and more and more loud. <laughs> Yo, that is and incredible. I I when I was no. in, when I was in Australia I saw an international fireworks competition. This blew that out of the water. This was absolutely insane. But so, yeah, shout out, shout out to Nashville fireworks because that was <laughs> shout crazy. Out to Nashville fireworks, just a prime spot of the country too. Like people here love their fireworks. There Surrounding were, states, you're all about everywhere. Like it looked like um I remember a couple of years ago I've seen pictures from like the draft in all of the people lined down Broadway. That's what it was. It was absurd. Every bar downtown had like a cover you needed to do so like we didn't do that, but it like it was it, they do not mess around when it came to it. I love that. Anybody have a 4th of July story before Jack goes to this next question? By the way, great question by you, uh, Cameron Belden. 
Yeah, I would say mine. I'm growing up. I was always at the pool, and to the point where my family went. We went to the beach like once because me and my brothers were so content just going up to the pool, and we didn't want to miss a pool day in my neighborhood. My favorite Fourth of July activity at the pool party was probably the soda dive when all, a lot of the parents would get together and they would throw a ton of cans into the pool and my family was not a soda family and so we were just raking it in they the lifeguard blew that whistle three two one in there scooping up all the sodas no they they weren't allowed but they had their own little activities going on so question because I've never heard of that. You basically just throw in a shitload of soda into the pool and then whatever you can come out with, like it's yours, you take home. Exactly. Yeah. Soda nice. Yeah, soda sink. So you go to the, they usually will throw the best sodas in the deep end because it's 12 feet deep and you got to be like everyone that can hold their breath for a long time. The swim team was in there. Yeah, the swim team was in there. So shout out to my neighborhood. I love my neighborhood. I love it so much. My rehearsal dinner is at my pool clubhouse yes sir and it will Let's be a pool go. party so that's my that's my fourth july story that's solid the uh what's what so what would be the weaker sodas in the shallow end compared to the when you say best sodas in the deep end which ones in your mind are the best sodas you know what i mean like are they just throwing like diet cokes in the shallow end no i would say like the more rare in our neighborhood more rare sodas would be like a sun-kissed grape sun-kissed you know, cherry Dr. Pepper, mm. wild cherry Pepsi. Mm. And then in the other end is like your Sprite, maybe a, a little Mountain Dew thrown in there. But yet normal Mountain Dew, normal Mountain Dew is in the shallow end. Code Red, Mountain Blue is in the deep end. The Code Red, that was a vibe. In the summer? Oh. Have we done tear talk for sodas? I don't think we have really. Because you want to know a sleeper is that caffeine free Mountain Dew in the gold can. Yeah, gold can. <laughs> in, the, in the gold can. My grandparents loved it. And for What do we have here, Jack? From uh, This is from Jack underscore Slater 007. What's one summer activity on your list you haven't done yet that you got to do or get in before the fall in football? Dude, for me, it's definitely in JP. You shared a video of Alex. Uh, uh, how do you say his last name? Pereira? Yeah. <laughs> tubing? Yes. Dude, tubing is so fun to me. So so I would love to hit the I would love to hit the water, hit a lake, pull a tube in, uh, pull a tube from behind, hit some barrel rolls, try to catch a fat wave, crash hard as fuck, maybe tear my labrum. Dude, we should do it. Yeah, Delaney has a boat. We should definitely have a little. We should definitely have a little day. Yeah, a little bussing boat day. Can all you guys swim? Can you swim, Sherm? All right, all right. Uh, an activity that I've been seeing, and I've been wanting to do it for like summers now. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the summer, but I think it's called Starlight Theater or something like that, but it's a drive-in movie theater, and I've never been to one before. And I'd love to just like, if I could find a girlfriend or just, you know, bring 10 of my guy friends there again. <laughs> but I'd love to just like pull up with the car, bring like, you know, the blankets and stuff in the back. You know, you get the popcorn, whatever, the snacks, and just like go see a movie in the middle of a field somewhere. You get the speakers that attach to your car. I don't know. I just feel like whenever you see a drive-in movie theater in movies, it's either the greatest vibe ever or like someone's getting murdered in like a scary movie. So hopefully it's it's the good vibe, but... I, do, I would love to go check out the drive-in movie theater before the summer's up. I think that'd be a good time. Yeah, it sounds like a good good family activity. Take a little roof for a little drive-in movie. Yeah, the one they have, they have two theaters too. So they'll do like two family-style movies and then they'll do two like adults. So if you want to bring a roof or, you know, like the, the kids, they've got that kind of entertainment value for you. And then if you want to take, you know, your boys or a couple adults, they also have some actual just, you know, PG-13 rated R kind of film. So I think it'd be a good time. Yeah. Through it's it. like 30 minutes away. Rue's been on this kick where, and I would love if any dads or parents have advice for this, but she gets, she'll get so mad about something. She just starts hitting herself in the face. <laughs> like double handed just starts hitting herself in the face. And we're like, Hey, you know, you're saying hey, like, why are you hitting yourself? But she'll get, if you can't like understand what she's saying, you get like three attempts to understand what she's saying. Like, cause you gotta like repeat it back to her versus just saying like, yeah, that's right. She'll like want you to say it. 
And if you can't get it right, or you can't figure out what she's trying to do, she get she'll get so mad at times where she just starts double punching herself in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> I have no clue what's going on. So, you guys, <laughs> for any, anybody out there dealing that's dealt with that, or maybe I'll have to Google Google if that's normal. But what else do we have? Should we hit some? Should we hit some ads and roll? Before we get into it, the episode, uh, we got to shout out Walker Zimmerman. He's on the Olympic team for soccer. And on that topic, who do you got in the Copa America? Right now we're in the semifinals. Euro and Cup's also going on. So just some people want to know your prediction. <laughs> so I think you said a couple tournaments are happening. Yeah. One the is World for... World Cup and Euro Cup? You're right. No, no, no. Copa America and Euros. What's Copa America? North America, South America, some of the Caribbean. It's their tournament. So who's in the semis? <laughs> America. You tell me who who do you, who do you want to win the tournament? Team USA. We're out. So how's Walker Zimmerman playing? That he got he made the Olympic team. <laughs> so that's a different that's a different. He's in a different ball game. Yeah. I'll give you the semifinals right here. Argentina versus Canada. And then Uruguay versus Colombia. I'll say Argentina. I think Argentina will take the gold in that tournament. And then the Euro Cup. Yep. Um, Euro Cup, you got Spain versus France. Brazil. And then Netherlands versus England. It's either Spain or France, right? I think it's France because that's got that. It's got that uh, light skin dude, right? Mbappe. 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 I'm gonna say France. Nice. He watching him. What did he have? Like, uh, what was it? Uh, a hat trick, three goals in the World Cup last year or two years ago. Yeah. Where he like made. I mean, he's obviously a popular name, but that was like the only soccer game I've consumed probably in the last few years. I'm impressed. That was good. Is Argentina are they a little threat? Yeah, I mean they're always a threat. Sure. Messi's last international tournament probably. Oh, so. Messi's on Argentina. Y yeah. <laughs> I rest my case. Good call. <laughs> yeah, I'm always saying France and Argentina. I might just have to uh, throw some money on this. Speaking of money, here we go. DraftKings. It is finally here. Best ball week at DraftKings. Here is why it is a big deal. DraftKings Best Ball Millionaire Contest is their biggest fantasy contest ever. We are talking $15 million guaranteed in prize pool money with two. That is right. Two millionaires being crowned for first and second place. If you're a set and forget it type, then best ball is for you. There are no waiver wires, no roster management, biggest rosters, so injuries won't end, or bigger rosters, so injuries won't end your season. Only the draft, and that is it. You are set for the season. And if you're still not convinced, this year's DraftKings is offering everyone a draft one, get one special. So your $20 entry fee scores you a bonus ticket. Best Ball Week is here. Download the DraftKings app and use code BUS. That's code BUS for all customers who enter the NFL Best Ball $15 million millionaire contest to get a bonus ticket and get a shot at being crowned for one of two millionaires. It is Best Ball Week only on DraftKings. Let's get into this episode with uh, with Quentin Nelson. We talked to him a lot. Like he's had some injuries over the last couple of years. So we talked to him. We dive in there. We actually, it's pretty funny on the very top of the episode. He talks about his new relationship with his with his girl, which I think will have a lot of relatability with the fellas out there. Um, we talk about how he was nixed off the top 100 list for the first time, I think, in his career last year. And how he kind of thinks about all of these external lists that get made up. Uh, I think he's a, what, six-time Pro Bowler? three or four time all pro an absolute unit and specimen your boy just sits back in the corner looking extremely small next to a queue on the on the bus on the couch next to me but it's a great episode uh you guys will enjoy it if you're still if you guys are tuned in make sure you're subscribed if you're listening on audio make sure you are following and subscribe to the boys going off of last week with real bros of simi valley make sure you check out their movie it is out on roku now uh if you have a roku subscription Whatever it is, the uh, Real Bros of Simi Valley is out right now. Go watch that with the boys. Um, and yeah, man, without further ado, this is the Quentin Nelson episode on Bussin' with the Boys. You're breaking up horribly. I'm, I'm literally on the bus doing a podcast right now, so I have to go. I love you so much. Bye.
All right. Did, did you even let him say I love you back? No, I just, no, just hung up on that. It's, it stops me from being heartbroken. Okay. If I tell somebody I love them and they don't like, all right, see ya. That Ooh, fuck yeah, you. Not, you yeah, turn no, the volume off yeah. in your car and you just keep driving. <laughs> and then you think, did he hear me? Did I say I love you? Yeah. Yeah, that happened a lot in the no, beginning of, of Will and I's relationship because I was always a big I love you when I got the phone guy. And Will would be like, all right, see ya. I think. No, that's, that's not that's true. Tough. When we first met, absolutely. No. That's Cap. I'm an I love you guy. Even now if I don't really know Now you, you are. Since you've, <laughs> since you've met me. <laughs> <laughs> you've become an I love you guy. Okay. Call someone right and sit for a new level. Who do you want me to call? Whoever you want. All right. My, uh, me be, becoming an I love you guy came from uh, the boy Matt Ioannidis. Good player. Yeah, good player. That's not true. Right. It is true. I'm telling my you story. Don't. You think I became yeah, an I love you guy because of you? I, mean, I know you be, listen. When the Will Compton I met in 2018 at the Tennessee Titans, guy's guy, Missouri cat, Never showed any emotion type of cat. Didn't even like FaceTime. Didn't enjoy FaceTime. Duh. Would be on the red light. Yeah, and I, I didn't specifically enjoy remember I saying that. I love you because we were like so early in our friendship to where I love you was like a blasphemous thing to say. And I would say I love you and you'd be like, all right, man. <laughs> and you'd hang up the phone. I'd say I love you too. No, you would uh, not, bro. I'm an I love you guy. I love that. You are an I love you guy. And you do say I love you a lot on the phone. Not every time. Yeah. Not every time, I guess. Sometimes he's mad at you. Oh, hey, don't be scared with this thing. Let's get oh, it closed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Piece, Six dude. time pro bowler, four time all pro. Quint Nelson back on the bus. You were part of Bus with the Boys episode number 10. It's been and a we're while. on like we're on like what? Two two eighty three. That's crazy. That's wild, bro. Yeah. You think we'd make it this far? Always, always had faith in you guys, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how's uh, how's life been? Where do we even catch up? I, it, it sucks because you're here for the beer games. Mm -hmm. It would be fun to be like hungover doing this post beer games and talk about it a little bit more. Um, but what's new, bro? Like, let's let's chop it up. Uh, nothing up much. Um, just been uh, living in Indiana, having a great time there. Um, been uh, dating the same girl for. Uh, Two and a half years now. Ooh, okay. Uh, she's great. Um, got a dog. Uh, adopted him like two years oh. ago. What kind of dog? What kind of breed? Wait, why are we knocking on the table for that? Got, that's not good news. Wood. That's oh, good okay, news. Okay. You're with me, dude. Um, so I land a sheep dog. He's uh, yeah, he's twelve and a half years old. He's a good boy. Um, and then. Yeah, just uh, spent the off season in uh, Miami Beach and had a great time there, um, but nothing too new. Just grinding for next season? Yeah, you know it, man. Keep stacking. Dude, yeah. two and a half years. Mm -hmm. You guys living together right now? Oh, yeah. Been on that. For how long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, since I can remember. It was it was kind of like uh, that thing where she just like stayed over at the crib um, for like four nights in a row and then like i was like all right like what's going on like <laughs> yeah. she, she's she's gotta like say like oh, okay i'm gonna go home and like get some new clothes or like something like that like and leave and she just like wasn't doing it so then i was just like <laughs> so what's the game plan yeah, yeah. like i was yeah. like well you're you gonna go home soon like and she was like oh yeah like if you want me to leave, I will. Oh, <laughs> she hit me with that. So she flipped it on me. And then I'm like, well, it's not that I want you to leave or anything. I just like need my personal time and stuff. So uh, that was a funny story uh, early on. And uh, yeah, pretty much like, I, I don't even think like I asked her to move in with me. It's just like kind of happened. And uh, it, it's been great. That's like, how it goes down. Every, that knows every day wants. is amazing. Yeah. and uh, Men are always just caught off guard. It's like... Well, how, 100%. Do I get my, how can I sneak upstairs, go play video games? Is yeah. that cool? Like it is funny the first time like you're realizing you finding out you're moving in with somebody without yeah. even knowing. Yeah. And the whole they haven't got their clothes in a while. Using the washer and dryer. Yeah. You come home, they've cooked a little something, you're like, Are we I'm supposed to get online with the boys? Yeah. yeah. You cool if I yeah, yeah, go ahead. So how did that conversation end up? This kind of was like, Yeah, if you want me to leave, and you're like, No, I don't want you to leave. And she's like, Okay. Stay. Um, I was like, I just need some like I'm used to my personal time, like blah blah blah, because that was early on, and I was like, uh, like I was like, 
yeah like i want to go hang out with my boys like <laughs> uh so like yeah <laughs> that's per- pretty much how it probably happened like literally with literally with me saying like so yeah like (laughs) (laughs) as long as that's cool Uh, you got a place to stay yeah yeah. nice you know what comes next right Mm -hmm. that little ring ski yeah that little thing on the finger has she done any of the things like hey so no tail line on this little thing right here it's interesting oh did you hear about janice she just got engaged (laughs) janice (laughs) yeah oh my gosh trisha Uh, just got engaged see look how beautiful the ring is i don't like that ring i actually like a squared off ring. (laughs) throwing some hints there and there yeah um is she hinted at all yeah yes yeah, it's, it's kind of a little bit more private with that but yeah, uh, yeah, 100%, yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. yeah that was a stupid question there's there's one <laughs> i had an ex and we were together like seven eight years and i remember they were they were we were on like a double date they were going on about somebody getting engaged in like a short period of time and me and my boy we kind of got a couple stairs and i just said when well, you know what you want Oh, which I feel like makes it worse I being know, with somebody oh. for seven it did, years. It did make it worse. I was with a girl when I when first, I'm like, hey, when you know, you know. Yeah, I was with a girl um, when I first got to Nashville, and we were dating for like three months, and she was going off about something one day, and I, I looked at her, I go, if I propose to you right now, you would say yes, wouldn't you? She's like, yeah, I would. I thought I gotta, I gotta. That's crazy. <laughs> it's been three months. What are we talking about? Whoa, here? Whoa, wow. <laughs> I know. How many months months did you? I, that was twenty fourteen Taylor, twenty sixteen Taylor. <laughs> Five weeks engaged, two months married. <laughs> you like, go, oh, it's three phases, months. What when you know, you know. About? Yeah. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. Mm-hmm. A wild deal. What was the what was the reason for uh, Miami Beach? Why did you decide to train down there? Because you you strike me as a cat that just jumps around when he trains. I know one year you were in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. We had that great off season in Carlsbad oh, that yeah. one year. Yeah, we did. So you kind of jump all over the place. You just haven't found a place you love the most. Yeah, and uh, Miami Beach was definitely like my favorite. Yeah. Um, just like the first day I got there and like walking around like outside beautiful weather sun setting and the uh water just looked so like light blue and it's just so nice down there good food um got a good gym to train at down there it's like what else do you need like and you could go to the beach every day after training and it's cool it's a nice little setup feeling healthy yeah feeling great no you've had some ups and downs in the recent years yeah you feeling for back sure to, like you're no, ready to take somebody's good. life out there um felt like last year was a like great step in the right direction um two years ago definitely like not too proud of that year that i had on the field um, why is that um performance um mostly uh so are you like playing through injury when this performance is like at a decline like when um, you look back are there things that you would have kind yeah, of differently i don't think you want to make ex- excuses because like everyone in the league is like going through something like yeah when it's week eight or week 10 like everyone's got something that they're dealing with something that they're getting treatment on um so no excuses at all like you know we've all played through something before and had like the best game of our lives like playing through that shit so um you know no excuses um but yeah last year was great with uh shane coming in shane steichen and Tony Sperano Jr., uh, my offensive line coach, love him. Um, and, you know, we just had fun every day at work, like bullshitting in the meeting rooms, getting our work done, and like really dialing in on the technique and the fundamentals and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, – like I was like happy to be at the facility every day and like excited to. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun year last year. Um you know, dealt with some injuries with uh, AR getting hurt and Gardner stepped in, did a great job. And, uh, you know, I think we went past other people's expectations, which like who gives a fuck. But um, it was a good step in the right direction. Like we won uh, close games, like gritty games. And uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for this year for sure. But personally, body's feeling great. Um, and I feel like I'm even more dialed in than last year. And then for the team too, like getting like everyone healthy, everyone in another year of experience. Uh, and then like another year under this coaching staff, like I think it, uh, we can have a great year. So when you talk about like, you're more dialed in this year than you ever have been, like what are the things that you changed off the field that are helping you go into this year? Cause mm-hmm. I mean, boys, obviously your resume is insane. Pro bowls, all pros, but every year you're getting older and older. And father time inevitably catches yeah. up with all of us. Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, 
you know, when you, every, every year you're evaluating yourself. So, um, after two years ago of like having like a bad year, um, evaluate, okay, what did I do in the off season that might've contributed to this? And then changing up my off season program to have, uh, a, a better year of like fixing some of the negatives that I had, uh, as a player. So, um, I had a good off season last year and I feel like this, after this past season, evaluating this season, now I was a able to evaluate it, um, even more so and, um, really focus on like things I need to improve on. Uh, so yeah. When you were saying oh, yeah. something earlier, like you, you're having fun going to work. Is that more staff induced, culture induced, just being healthier? Um, I, it's definitely a combination of everything, but just like uh, our offensive line coach is fucking awesome. Who's your uh, line coach there? Tony Sperano. Tony Sperano. Where did he come from before that? Um, he was with uh, Jacksonville, I believe, as a assistant offensive mm -hmm. line coach. Um. No, sorry, Giants as an assistant offensive line coach. He he was in Jacksonville and um, yeah, young dude. He's like thirty six or thirty eight years old and just like one of the boys. Um, but also like your coach first. But he cares about you as a person, as a player, and mm -hmm. um, best ones to have. Yeah, dude. And he's Italian too, so you know he's got like yeah. he's got some shit to him. Yeah, yeah. 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 And to like this is a pod that has had some battle line coaches. It's like he's talking really highly of this one that must have meant the one before, maybe not as enjoyable. Oh, you're trying to connect. And the I'm dots, saying, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like this. Trust me, this is a safe space. Like you know, Taylor over here. I mean, <laughs> Taylor, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 percent the whole time you were talking. <laughs> you want me to yam on Keith Carter right now? No, no, I'm no, not no, gonna no, do no, that. No, he's caught enough bullets from me. He has caught because I feel way like every time I've spoke about him, like there's something that comes out because the Jets organization is like always waiting. To get somebody, yeah. you know the players, the boys are. They're like, yeah, the, the right boys are like, keep player. preaching, brother. Yeah, keep fucking please preaching. Dude, please keep doing it. <laughs> it is tough. But yeah, dude, having <laughs> having a good offensive line coach makes your world so much better. Just position, yeah. just you have August a good to, position to January, coach. and you know because everyone thinks about the head coach and then the OC, and but people really don't dial, dive into the position coach and how like you're with that dude the most out of any other coach. They're he, the most important. He one. makes or breaks your mood a lot of times, and it's all like, yeah. Got to be a steel wall. Nothing gets in. Nothing gets out. Kind of vault in yeah. the mental. But, bro, you get to week eight, and it's been an absolute grind. You're we're past the halfway point of the season. If you include camp, you just want some good vibes around you. Mm -hmm. You want that guy to get you, give you a pat on the ass. If it has been going well, tell him it's gonna get better. If it's been going well, tell you to keep it up. Those type of vibes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's Esperano is. Yeah, no, he's great, and um, he cares about like every single guy in the room, like from the guys in the first chairs to the back of the room and makes everyone feel important. Everyone has a voice in the offensive line room and can ask a question or, um, you know, crack a joke. And like, it's the rip closest knit. Yeah. Rip a fart. Like I do that shit all the time. Yeah. So, Oh, oh yeah, like, yeah. You know, bro. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. You know, he's a salt goat, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, like it's the closest our group has been, um, since I've been there and it's, it's really special. Are you a vocal guy? Yeah. Are you a first chair vocal? Nah, I'm pretty vocal in there. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. See, I would have guessed the opposite. I know. Same. But the, I thought it's probably just going to be like, do it like big Q. Q just kind of, he just kind of nods, <laughs> puts his hand up, just does it right all the time type of guy. You're a vocal leader. Um, I wouldn't say too much of a vocal leader. Just like, you know, when an opportunity presents itself, like speak up, like, but not going out of my way to yeah, no, say like some bullshit. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it wild seeing like new crops of guys come in every year, these 21, 22 year olds, and they like are a fan of you? Um, Yeah, I feel like most guys like don't try to like do that and like, you know, suck you off type of deal. Cause like the whole group will get after him and be like, dude, shut the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been seeing that on the. <laughs> dude, golf that channel. thing's been yeah. going nuts. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. Um, and we're bringing in like good dudes. Like we brought in, uh, three rookies this year and they're like all good dudes and 
not shithead, so that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. How impressive is uh, Anthony Richardson? Very, very. What do we have to look out for with him this year? Um, you know, he because he's one of the ones that basically doesn't get uh he doesn't get talked about. You got Trevor Lawrence, you right? Got Will Levis kind of had the year when he came on the scene last year. Obviously, C.J. Stroud, um, A.R. kind of had some injuries that took him out of the conversation, but people were mm-hmm. pretty like impressed with how he started just his yeah. rookie year. No, he he was electric like when he was in there, um, and he's an absolute freak. Like he's weighing in like after practice at like two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> like he's like ginormous. Um, he can launch the ball and he can be accurate with it too like the plays that he can make like some of the ones that you've seen like the flashes of it it's like oh my goodness like this guy's special but then also how he goes about his business and like um he he's not very vocal i would say but like he just goes about his business in a way that he's handling it and he's ready at all times and um yeah, he's he's special, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, he's gonna, I think he's gonna be nice. Yeah, I think. I mean, you look at the whole AFC South in general, dude. Like the oldest guy yeah. is Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Everybody else is going in their second year, so it's gonna be like in a couple of years, the AFC South is going to be like the division to deal with. Yeah, if all of these guys keep going on the path that people think yeah. they're gonna go down, I'm just yeah. gonna want them to slide. Yeah, he went to Florida, right? Yeah, he kind of like came on the scene. Like he had a crazy last year. Mm-hmm. Did like triple backflips, dude, at like eighty yards. Yeah, <laughs> I have it, a yeah. friend that lives down where he trains. I don't know if he trains in Jacksonville or wherever, but it's a friend of a friend got a flat tire on the side of the road, and Anthony Richardson was the one that pulled over and helped him out. Yeah, that's the type of dude he is. For real? Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. That is badass, dude. Yeah, this kid is a freak, man. You got a quarterback that can do that. Mm-hmm. Even the guys that are rushing, they have to think like, oh, we have to stay in our lanes the whole time. It makes it so much easier yeah. to block. Don't rush behind. And we, and we didn't have JT in the beginning of the year either. Um, I don't think Yeah, he JT was dealing with something, and, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't think they got to play with each other. So um, just having both of them in the backfield uh, is crazy. That is insane. Yeah. The spin move. Dude, what if you can talk about it? What happened with Shaq Leonard? Um, with Shaq, uh, is that like contract stuff? No, no, um, just another thing of like father time and like injuries really? piling up. Like, yeah, he's the same year as you, right? He was a savage, not yeah. saying I, he still can because he's, he's with the Eagles yeah. now, right? I, I I mean, but I was surprised that there, you know, that a breakup or whatever occurred uh, in the middle of the yeah. year. So I think he got cut, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to like talk into his business or anything. Yeah. Um, for sure. But like, great dude, unbelievable player. Um, and if he can just like figure out how to get healthy and like get back, like, yeah, he'll Playing be great. Playing ball. I mean, his yeah. arms are down to his knees. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a fr- he was a freak. Yeah, I would just say like health is like the most important thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's a bummer to for see everyone because like, he was the cat that you watch on film on the defense. Be like, you just got to if you block this guy, you got a shot to gain some yards running yeah. the ball. I mean, the amount of turnovers he caused, insane. Yeah. His um, ability to target the in football. his first. Well, we were playing. Yeah. Uh, we were playing y'all one year, and he was like, "I don't care if I get ran over by Derrick Henry. I'm trying to get the ball out." And there's literally a play of him taking to like around into the boundary. And you can see Shaq just flow his body just to punch in, just gets railroaded. <laughs> and he, you could just stand up. He didn't give a fuck because he was just literally trying to punch the ball out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All he cared about. And that is a dude did not care how you look on film just to get get something done is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And he seemed like he was a good leader too. A hell of a leader, yeah. That's unreal. It's 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 always heartbreaking to see a breakup mm-hmm. happen between one franchise to the other. Mm-hmm. Very personable dude, like treated everyone the same in the building. Mm-hmm. Um Always like asking how you're doing and stuff. So yeah, yeah. He Will was telling me he had himself a nice little play on you, Quentin. You want to talk about that? I slept he him did. one time. He did. Yeah. How that had to hurt a little bit. It definitely did. Because you knew I like because you knew it's one thing that somebody gets a tackle on you. It's another thing when that person that got a tackle on you has a platform to talk about that tackle <laughs> he got on you. Not only that, but that guy's like not even so, supposed to be in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Gave him a little supposed shock. Supposed to be on special teams. I remember, like, like even making fun too. I was like grinning when I got up, being like, "Oh, I kind of got cute right there." Dude, I, I 
That, <laughs> Take that, me through it, Q. What was it? Inside I mean, I don't, I don't think about that play, but now that it was brought up, like, <laughs> that one definitely stung where, like, I was just like, fuck. Like, and I, I walked back to the huddle, like, just like reevaluating shit. Like, <laughs> God, away. fucking Compton just got to go to the next play, but at that moment, you, there's no way you're in the next play. It was for, to Will's credit, it was, it was a great play by him. Like, it, it was silky, it was smooth. That. What happened? Just slipped. Through? It was just. I think it was like inside. I'm sure, Will could go on his favorites on his phone and just be like, <laughs> I "Oh, do need, this is what happened." I, I do need to find <laughs> it. Right here. I got the NFL Plus app. I will have to find it. And drop in the chat I need later. The NFL Plus app. But, you know, just protecting the A gap. Get a three tech in front of him. I'm getting to the. Gonna A-gap. be playing beer pong in a couple days. So you're gonna be like, <laughs> just like that game, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that will be brought up. Yeah, because when you were even an option to come on, Will was like, you know, I got his ass right. <laughs> I didn't think AQ on the day. We interrupt this episode to bring you Shady Rays. Get ready for the season with the official sunglasses brand of Barstool Sports. Uh, Our friends have you covered with their newest and boldest premium polarized shades. They're kicking off their most anticipated release of 2024 with a limited edition debut of their rival collection. This is a new single lens style in Barstool Blue with a premium stool and stars lens etched into it. And if you're looking for something more casual the classics are also getting the barstool treatment both of these styles are perfect for all day everyday comfort and performance if you don't love your shades exchange them for a new pair or return them worry free within 30 days there's no risk with shady rays their team always has your back with personal and fast support head to shadyrays.com and use code boys b-o-y-s for 35 percent off polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over three hundred thousand people that's shadyrays.com and use code boys for 35 percent off back to the episode yeah, that's awesome you know q q's like me when he gets drunk he gets a little physical yeah i mean he uh, likes to wrestle birthday, around. birthday party a few years ago when we had basically like the beer games oh yeah that beer pong tournament you guys won in death cup dude oh hey, yeah i forgot just... about that Wait, you talking about when uh we played Wasn't that Neely? That was some uh, It was me and that, Neely. That might have been it was not Neely. Yes, it was me and Neely and we were playing you guys and we were obviously like we're all ready to just beat each other. Fuck and it you was guys Neely. won on a death cup. Like I either you or Keith, I think you, I think no, Neely was holding his drink and it he was like, hey, watch shirt. this, and banks it off of Neely's shirt. And it was like early cup. in the game, like 10 cups to 9 cups or something. It was just It was over. over. He had full cup, and then it was like, well, that's good. We just started. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. Big time pool basketball guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Q is? You, I mean, you can just tell he's going to he's gonna do work in those boards. Dude, I'm not a pool basketball Are we basketball playing pool basketball? Yeah, of course. You and Taylor. Oh, that's, you will be that gets so physical. Two fish It does. Time. I see. I love it. The idea of pool basketball is way more fun than actually playing pool basketball. Yeah, because yeah. it's just way. You don't too agree busy. with that at all. No, nah, I honestly didn't hear what he said. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking. You know of why something he else. doesn't agree? He's because he didn't hear you, and because he's massive and he doesn't give a fuck. He's great at pool basketball. Yeah, you think anybody's moving him? I bet you I can get a point on that. I don't think you could, bro. You're like about, sixty bro. pounds. Down. He's gonna toss you around. Maybe, but I'm. And look at the length of his arms. <laughs> I can move in there, dude. You see me in the water, JP. I can move. <laughs> I mean, I t- Taylor's got the home court advantage. That, True. We gotta, I know that hoop. We got to count that in. You know the hoop, yeah. I know the hoop. I know my range you know is the on the floor, hoop. You know the floor, how to grip the floor. Exactly, dude. Yeah. My toes turn to like primate toes. <laughs> I start gripping that shit everywhere. This is what you have to look forward to tomorrow. Those of you watching this episode, Beer Games Championship of the World has taken place. However, Quentin has do- dove in the day before Beer Games Championship of the World. And now we're watching a couple of clips right now that I'm sure Mitch Carza will show for all of you watching on YouTube. Guys, low key yoked. Yeah, low key, low key. You, you you're more yoked now. Is than that a knee man. sleeve on? He stays. <laughs> yeah, it's a knee sleeve. I will have it on tomorrow. Your boy Shane. Oh yeah, Shane. My bro. Phone. How about how about your boy Shane? Have, are you guys good? Yeah, I, I I've never talked to him. I know, but he I, loves you. You guys, he yeah, but you guys kind of have some words him. going through me for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, a couple like birthday texts or something. And, but, you know uh, Shane hates that we're saying how much Shane loves Q right now. But this, you're you're his number one. That's crazy. You were. I don't think you are anymore. It might be like that because I never went to that comedy show in Indy. Yeah, Damn. I remember when uh, you guys were trying to get me to go. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I won't say he, but there was. It, a, it I might have been him, during there, the there season. There was a. There was a. I will tell him I will suck him off if he comes to the show. <laughs> someone said that. Yeah, someone said someone that. I'm said gonna say that. who said it. Guy loves Notre Dame. Yeah, loves it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got. Now, where do we go from this? If like, you uh, do, we continue to. If you had to go to any other school other than Notre Dame, where would you go? 
Mm. Big Ten, colors blue and yeah, yellow. I, I think it was uh, between like Ohio State and Penn State after Notre Dame. Yeah. How far ahead was Notre Dame over Ohio State and Penn State? Very. Yeah. Big what what about blue. Notre Dame was like? Was it so, South Bend? Uh, was it no, the atmosphere? No, it, um, was it the linebacker? It, it it wasn't South Bend, but was uh, the was girlfriend? it the linebacker? <laughs> Take that official um, visit. Yeah, dude. The uh, the, just the offensive line culture there was amazing. Uh, with like Zach Martin there and Chris Watt and um all these other d- dudes. Um, so like seeing them and just like the way they try to help each other get better, and then obviously the coach there, Coach Heastan. Uh, was like phenomenal seeing the way he attacked every day and like gave 100% in the meeting rooms and then on the field and like coach guys to get better. I knew that was the way I wanted to be coached and like that was the group that I wanted to join. Um, and then I thought Notre Dame was like a beautiful campus too and the great academics there. So, mm-hmm. do you ever see yourself academics. playing anywhere else other than <laughs> Indy? Uh, no. Where you at in your deal? How many more years you got? Uh, three. Oh, it got you locked up right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go back to that table, though. He might have just went back to the table. I think he got paid what two years ago? Uh, yeah, yeah, two Dude, years ago. We got that five year, that five year piece, eighty something, right? Mm hmm. God. Yeah, yeah. dude, well, four year eighty milli. Congratulations. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Need to buy place in Congratulations, two years later. So what uh yeah, I know, yeah right. <laughs> um what was your first big purchase mm, i i do have a ford bronco but i i purchased that before the uh contract like when you get a deal well, like the, you re-up the 80 million you know, what are you about to say let's fucking go get this mm, anything <laughs> like uh but, that was actually maybe the best answer yeah at first i'm like yo what are you talking about and i'm like oh he can legit just buy yeah, it just go get it yeah that i mean there wasn't anything like super big uh my my bronco <laughs> was pretty expensive but uh other than that it's just like little shit here and there where it's like fuck it it's 60 dollars 80 dollars like a- a- <laughs> yeah, amazon I like i buy so much on amazon like, so many boxes just 60 so many trinkets yeah. shopping you yeah. do priority on uh, Uber Eats. Yeah, every I do. Time. Yeah, you buy a place in Miami Beach. I, I did. Yeah, that would be one. That would. Yeah, that yeah, that nice. that would be one. So you yeah, got you got there. Indiana, Miami Beach. Mm-hmm. That's it. Bahamas. No. Cabo. Cabo. Oh yeah, you're a big Cabo guy. Right. I think you the only went to Cabo one time with me. Yeah, I went to Cabo with uh, Taylor and then another one with uh, my friends. Um, it's a good time. It's a good yeah. time. You it's a really good place. time with you. Yeah, dude, we had a great time. Yeah. That place Will, you guys had. Will didn't show up either. Come on. He actually did bail on that, didn't yeah. he? You were kind of supposed to go. Did I bail? I don't think w- I bailed. Was he supposed to go to Blackberry with you when I went with you? No. And, no. and he bailed on that? And no. I, I, the the I, I way Taylor in. operates is he, try, he just tries to get you to commit when he says it. And I'm not the most committal person. He's, he, he's a very So persuasive. he can flip it yeah, that I bailed, but I'm not like. I think you even tried to not come. At first, yeah. when we were going to Cabo, I was like, bro, you, you're here. He was yeah. staying in an Airstream on the property we were staying at. Yeah. Just chilling. No AC, nothing. Just a box of chocolates and a bed for him. <laughs> <laughs> he was just hanging. And we would go get these workouts in and then just go hang out with Johnny. Yeah. And the chickens. Pula. That it's- was like the most fun. You hear about Pula? Passed away. Oh, man. Who's Pula? This guy named Johnny. Uh, he owns this <clears> property <throat> on the bluff in uh, Carlsbad or Encinitas. And he has like the big house and then there's like two studio, like small little suites. He stays in one of the studios and we would stay in the house. And then he had this Airstream that he just like had nothing cooked up to it or nothing. So Q had, we well, used to like an extended stay right by yeah, the hotel, hotel or right yeah. by the uh, Exos, Carlsbad. Right. And Q, we met at the Pro Bowl and we became boys. Low key Q thought I was a douchebag before. Yeah. And then no, we became did, yeah. friends. And I was like, dude, just come stay. Just come stay with us and hang out. And so he would just come and hang out. And it'd be just me, Taylor, and him. Yeah. And win. And win. So who's Pula? Pula's Johnny's dog. Yeah. Oh, God. Pula's Johnny's dog. Do- the dog would just bite things. It had no teeth. It was an awesome dog. It was a good time. It's a good boy. Sounds yeah. like a good boy. All right. We interrupt this episode to bring you Lucy. Everywhere we go, we're switching out 
what are these called? Cans, canisters, whatever it is, it doesn't fucking matter. You need to go to Lucy Breakers, lucy.co slash bussin, and we have you a generous 20% off your first order. But Lucy pouches that we go up to uh, 12 milligrams in strength. Right here, you're looking at the four milligram Lucy Breakers. These Lucy Breakers are my favorite. They have a, uh, uh, each breaker contains a hydration capsule that you crack open with your teeth right before tossing it in your lip. You throw it in, you bite it, you have a big burst. Think of an orgasm in your mouth. It gets the, t- the nicotine there faster and more efficient. The capsule releases a burst of flavor um, and the gas station pouches get the job done as well. But once you've tried Lucy, you won't want anything else in your pocket. Your boy was at 4th of July at the Cornhole Tournament dishing out Lucy left and right to the boys like, hey, slapping out whatever container they had in their hand. Try this. We're throwing it. They got 4 milligram, 8 milligram, 12 milligram. They got 2 milligram gum. All you got to do is visit lucy.co slash bussin and use promo code bussin to get 20% off your first order. If you subscribe, you get an extra 15% off and free shipping as always. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But your boy's favorite, Lucy Breakers Espresso and the Lucy Mango Pouches. Back to the episode. Well, you thought Taylor was a douchebag. Yeah, I did. Why did you think that? Just. Go ahead. You can speak freely. Uh, well, Taylor uh, is a bit of a trailblazer, a trendsetter, you know, very unlike this other is- offensive linemen uh, that I've been around, which like you guys have probably covered already. But um, just with all the posting on social media and stuff and. I was like, that's exactly what offensive linemen aren't supposed to be. Um, so I, I just always assumed that Taylor was a douchebag. And then, like, I might have heard that he, like, spit in someone's face once, like, on the, <laughs> on, on the football field. That You did, you actually heard that before? Uh, my rookie year. I, I heard that happen to <laughs> to one of our rookie DNs. Oh, what? Oh, Taylor's yeah. done it more than oh. once? Huh? Taylor's done it more than once because he's known for spitting on TJ Watt. I'm not, oh, that's really? not what I'm known for, but that is happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's like my one mark. Uh, what is it? A uh, hawk tw- Yeah, hawk to a hawk to hawk to a, yeah. Well, hold on now. Taylor hawk, started that Taylor hawk to it to one of your rookie uh, DNs. Uh, the, that was a, he said that, you know. He's probably It's lying. he say, yeah, yeah. who knows. Um, yeah. What was his name? You want to know his name? Yeah, I want to know his name. <laughs> Kimoko Ture. Damn. But anyway, or the fifties number, skinnier, long guy, love the spin move. Try to do yeah. the top every once Holy in a shit, while. Yeah, yeah. You know him. I know of him. Yeah. Wow. I was super happy anytime he was going up against me. I don't think I spit on him though. Okay. He could have lied. I yeah, I, but Who I knows? could be lying and not know it right now. Yeah. I truly don't remember. You're probably telling the truth. You think so? Yeah. If I mean, unless there's like video evidence of it, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say I did not do that. <laughs> And then like that's yeah, funny. I thought he was gonna say TJ, and somebody new no. comes into the fold. Yeah, that is well, no, he, yeah. So you thought I was a douchebag because I was spitting on people? No, nah, not 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 necessarily the spit. Just like being like kind of the opposite on social media of what like an offensive lineman like is what I thought like is supposed to be. So I keep your head down at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then meeting Taylor at like the Pro Bowl um, and getting to hang out with him like just impossible not to laugh and have a smile on your face around him and then just like just like getting into your personal life and like asking you questions and stuff and um it's like so easy to become his friend and well it wasn't easy because like part of me is like i'm supposed to hate this guy like (laughs) i always thought he's a douche on social like blah 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 and then uh you know you just you just give in you're just like all right this is my boy uh so yeah um yeah, Taylor's a great dude. That did feel good. That did feel nice. Yeah. And it was yeah. nice the roller coaster of it all. Little sour patch kid. Yeah. First they're sour, then they're sweet. No <laughs> question. Favorite candy too. I appreciate yeah. you saying that. I do impose myself in people's lives the minute I be- decide we're gonna become friends. Yeah. You guys both know that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cause it wasn't that I hated FaceTime. I mean, I do hate FaceTime, but it was just like I don't really do FaceTime. You're FaceTiming me all the time. You ready to admit ready to admit thirty minutes later that you actually weren't I love you guy? <laughs> No, dude, I, I, I'm an I love you guy. Brad's, a, Brad's across the, he's across the drive. He'll tell you I'm an I love you guy. In 2018, were you an I love you guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I feel like I've always been like a tell your bros. You're, you're always a little guy. more prickly around the the public displays of affection. So I'm not like a PDA guy or nothing. Well, when I see pictures of you with uh, like the OG teeth, that doesn't look like I love you guy. <laughs> but but with that smile okay. now, it's like that's an I love you that's guy. That's an I love you yeah. guy. Maybe that's when I made the switch. Maybe it was a teeth. Which would have been? When I met you. Okay. Hey, we're getting there. <laughs> we're about three more hours in this podcast. We'll get that thing dialed in. Did you uh, think uh, our video we did in Cabo would have gone as crazy as it did? That was nuts. Um, Cause we only did like uh, what it was two takes, two or three. Yeah, you said two or three. That nasty bitch come out of you, bro. Yeah, yeah. and we did have a couple margaritas. And yeah, we did. I don't remember who said it to you, Keel but like, you just rocks. gotta let your bitch out. And he did on one of them, man. It was so <laughs> awesome. Cause that was uh, when I, I I always loved Dub Smash. Was that what it was? Dub Smash when you would voice over. I was big in a dub smash when it first came out in like 14, 15. This was I like remember because when I went back on your Instagram way back in the day, your early ones was I had some dubbies the dub on smash. there. Yeah, 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 I thought it was they were so awesome. But this video went crazy. Yeah, it did. We got uh followed by Cardi B, which is kind of cool. Didn't she DM uh, you? No, no. Yeah, she did. That is no, perfect, she didn't. Man. Same uh, spot. Watch the way they both put the glass in at the same time. Same place. <laughs> Watch him. Taylor, you do a much better job of like doing everything that uh that he does. <laughs> they put the glass at the same time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yo, this is I love this. <laughs> That's crazy. And y'all watching it and no, me, no, we I, we like watch the video over and over and like I was like in the corner of the house, like kind of like learning what um who is that? Offset. Offset what he was Offset. doing. <laughs> And then Q was just bobbing around the hot tub, like knew his shit already, like in two seconds. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Imagine people seeing y'all. I do remember I called Corey Levin because I think maybe you did actually bail. Someone bailed on the trip. And I called Corey and I was like, bro, I know it's 24 hours in advance, but if you want to come on this trip, it's going to be a lot of fun. Like we do a, a yearly Cabo trip, blah, blah, blah. And Corey to this day still believes that should have been him in the video. Not you know. <laughs> <laughs> he still comments on it. But I do love that video so much. It's one of my favorite ever. That was a great trip. That house was great too. Yeah. Yeah. The crew was awesome. Rented mopeds. Yeah. You almost, throughout town. You brought the moped into the crib. Yeah. And like the, uh, I want to, what do you call the guys that were like working at the house? It's the best thing they call them. Butlers. Yeah. The butlers. Servants. Let's call them. <laughs> That's the word I was thinking of, but I didn't want to yeah, say it. There was a butler named Aaron there though. But like, Taylor, of course, became boys with the butler and like let him sit near the bonfire and like drink some of the booze and like have a good time. And uh, yeah. we're getting to know him. But like, dude, he loved us. Like when we left, he was like this. Yeah, we're like leaving the bus. He was so happy, dude. No, no, no. He, he was sad. So, but yeah, it, but sad. he, he was, but so he was happy like, that so, he met us. <laughs> but dude, you, you almost, uh, I think, drove that moped into the pool. Yeah. I did, but the thing about that that butler guy is he was so good. Like you would be in the pool, yeah. and your drink would be let last sip, and as you were putting down one, he had one one waiting for you, exactly the way you wanted it. Mm-hmm. It was it's awesome, incredible man. customer service. Oh yeah, good people. Oh yeah, what it's about. Oh yeah, good people, good times, man. Uh but yeah, that's all I have on that. Should we do some segments? Yeah, dude. I'm sure Mitch has some questions teed up for us. <coughs> uh, sure Q, Q, I think uh, Q's perfect for all the segments mm-hmm. that we do. Yeah. Because you watch the show, right? Every week? Not every week. I'm pretty sure your girl watches the show, right? Dude, yeah, she likes you guys. Um, She'll have it on now and then. Like, I walked in and she's like, I'm watching the bus boys. <laughs> she's, like, yeah. hey. she's like, have fun with the bus boys. Like, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. She should have came. Over. Yeah. She should have came hang out. She's going to be there tomorrow, right? Um, We we have the dog with us and uh, got to see how he's feeling. Fair Gotta enough. see how the old so, boy's feeling. Yeah, the yeah. old boy. A little tummy ache or Twelve and a half. It. Yeah. Let's talk about a twisted question. This question is brought to you by... Twisted tea. That is correct. It is a refreshing <laughs> hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and 5% alcohol. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted tea goes down smooth. There is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is a perfect alcohol slash beverage for game day, whether you're tailgating in the parking lot, watching at a bar, or watching with friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. 
This question comes from Mitch by. Um, would you rather have the to- toilet clog every time you use it or never be able to use a public bathroom again? Toilet clog. Say that again. Would you rather have the toilet clog every time you use it or never be able to use a to- uh, public bathroom ever again? You're talking about pee-pees too, brother. That urinal? Oh, you can't, See you can't go pee? I guess not, no. Well, I mean, you're, the, you're pl- the question guy. You got to have the parameters. You either... Thing. you. Every time you poop, it's clogging, or you're never allowed to poop in public ever again. I guess just clog it. Yeah, I'd say clog, you gotta as clog well. it, man. Yeah. Do Great we have another one? Mitch. Yeah. I can Great. <laughs> would you rather be able to shit or not shit? <laughs> have no. Would you rather just have no heat in the summer or no heat in the winter? No heat in the winter. No, Hang on, no well, heat in the winter. I, again, what's question? <laughs> no AC in the summer or no heat in the winter. No heat in the winter. Yeah, think about bedtime, bro. Nice and chilly. Hot, but I'm talking about a hot room in the I'm summertime. Saying it'd be nice in the wintertime. Yeah. Like cold. But dude, I, we were at a bar watching the second game of the, or the first game of the Vols on Friday, and we go in this place, and it's just like you can't adjust, and you're feeling horrible. And then we go, I'm like, can we turn the AC down? They go, oh, it's been broke for a week and a half. Well, oh. Like, in the middle of June, you can't you're, like that's got to be priority number one. You yeah, got to get someone in there fixing it. It's true. It's JP like, Hovey uh, coming to save the day. But somebody said this to me. It's good for y'all, like because it gets teammates involved. Yeah. If you were trapped on an island in the middle of nowhere and had no supplies, what three teammates would you pick to help you survive? Fuck, it's got to be teammates, huh? Mm-hmm. Three teammates, dude. Honestly, you I- need me to repeat that one for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! God damn. Man. Okay, Mitch. Yeah, you know you can't just keep beating them down. You gotta let. Yeah, make him repeat it for you. Be like, actually, oh, yeah, I do, motherfucker. Say it, say it again. What's the question, get off Mitch? The bus. I get enough shit already. <laughs> Mitch, what's the question? No, nah, no, nah, you're about to pull the Taylor on me. No, what's the question? <laughs> no, 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 no. He hates that joke. Uh, that joke is no. You're trapped. It's coming back tomorrow. On an island in the uh, middle of nowhere. Say? Hey, you and loved you had, it. And yeah, you had no supplies. What three teammates? <laughs> I did. Or I get. We'll do teammates. Would you pick to help you survive? <coughs> okay, heard Real you quick. the first time. Don't repeat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Q, love that. I to did. To the point where you couldn't really speak to him anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know. That sucks. That joke sucks. I know. Dude, that joke that, does not that, suck. That's a funny joke to no, me. It's not. It, dude. Sometimes not jokes for everybody. Sometimes they're for yourself, and you want to have it. And you know what? I'm tired of getting bullied by this bus. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> and it'll be back tomorrow. So keep on your toes, boys. Especially you, Quentin. You better be ready. I'll ready, probably go. Ready when? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. What? You know what? <laughs> Three teammates you would choose to be on a deserted island with. No supplies. Mm. Give me some country motherfuckers, dude. I'm going to go Trent Murphy. Got to. Great Adam choice. Hayward. Don't know who that is. And uh, Zach Vigil. Zach Vigil, Matt Ioannidis, or Colt McCoy. Take your pick. You just named six people. Well, yeah. I got a, I got, I, you can't lose with any a a combination of, of any of those three. a lot of friends. Three teammates. Got it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's for sure in there. I, but I need two more. Maybe Delaney? No. Forgot he's got a farm, dude. He's got a farm, but you can't be wearing those kind of clothes for a live show while also living on a farm. Yeah, but this is, we're talking about survival. Instinct. I don't think Delaney's surviving, but just because you live on property does not mean you can survive. Maybe I give him more credit than you do. Maybe you do. I think you do. We'll just prove that. But I believe in you, Delaney. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was a bummer. I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to go Ben Jones. Give me Traylon Burks. I think that's a good a dish right there. He's a fishing guy. He's yeah. Definitely gonna keep you fed. Arkansas guy, sure. loves to be outdoors. He showed up in boots. Yeah. And he's a wide receiver. That boy can live on an island. And then I need a vibes guy. Mm-hmm. That's important. Gotta have a vibes guy. You know who I'd probably bring in is uh Ruzi. Mm. I think Ruse is good. He's all about watching that show alone. He loves meat eater. Okay. He he's from Tejas, so he understands the. I think he would understand how to get things done. I would legit sit back and just hope we all didn't die, because I had 100%. I would not bring anything to the table. I uh, yeah, absolutely nothing. I would say for me, um, two offensive linemen, Braden Smith 
and Danny Pinner. Danny Pinner, big outdoorsman, fisherman, um, and then just like camping and hiking and shit. So I think that has a place, some value. Braden Smith, big uh, gardener, and like if he's a big boy. If anything does happen, like I think the three of us will be able to like take on whatever comes at us, whether it's a a bear, yeah, a bear, some type of animal. Who yeah, knows? Bear on um, and then Michael Pittman, good vibes, owns his own farm, Pittman Farms, um, and probably knows how to do some farming type shit. Yeah. yeah, seems like a good squad. Seems like a great squad. Yeah. If you're sh- trapped in a mall, oh please, answer this question. Go ahead, Will. You're trapped in a mall, and they release either a gorilla that's on like, and he takes a shot of what's it, adrenaline. Yeah, or five black mambas shot up with adrenaline, and it's just you and the animals in the mall. Which one are you surviving? Twenty four hours to survive. Black mambas or snakes, right? Yes. Yeah. Very venomous, dangerous snakes. Mischievous. What, They're in the Bible what did, as the devil. What did, what did we shoot them up with? Adrenaline. Some sort of adrenaline. They both have intent to kill. Yeah. They, they both have intent to kill. That's that's important. There it is right there. Look at that thing. Oh, Take it off, dude. Bro. I am definitely... 24 hours. I am definitely going mambas. You're taking the mambas? Mm-hmm. I see how it's a gorilla. Man. Gorilla? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I'm, I'm just terrified of snakes. Like, bro, I feel like dying and hearing as your last oh. one. They're gonna. Well, get that you. would suck. Getting like swallowed like that. Like, like if a gorilla gets right. you, like they're getting you when your adrenaline's at its highest. You're in straight fight or flight the entire time. Like you know, you're yeah. But what if you want to survive, bro? You That's got, you got kids do. at home. Yeah, and I know. Shit. I'm trying to. You're gonna survive, survive a gorilla running around the mall. Swinging and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. I feel like you have no that chance. One's hurt. Those mambas. I think you could outrun them. Uh, you see. I don't know, man. That's your, that's your first. Es- and then you're gonna es- escalators. Escalators, escalators, escalators. Just keep going up the escalator, down the escalator. Like, who yeah, knows? They're you, smart enough to like, divide no. and conquer. <sighs> that's, There's five that's of the those problem. boys. You got one at each exit, and then one for you to jump. Yeah, you might be able to kill the mambas. He kind of no. makes a decent point. Hey, look at the one, the gorilla with his back just standing up straight. Yeah, gorillas, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you guys think the gorillas are going to be doing if you take the gorilla. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. All right, fair, 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 fair. I stand by my response for the first time. Out, Snakes are the scariest <laughs> thing in the world, brain. dude. We're Snakes dying. are terrifying. <sighs> shout out, no for shout out? Yeah. Yo, wait. Also, like, the hissing over, like, the noises a gorilla makes... <laughs> It's like absolute terror. Like the hiss, like you might be able to go to sleep hearing like a in no the shot in the background. No. Like the gorilla, like getting closer to you, like making the noises a gorilla makes. You're not going Seriously. to sleep. For well, you're not going to sleep, but I'm just saying it's more peaceful than the. I fully love my plan. Go to Auntie Annie's, hit the elevators, close the elevator doors, press the emergency and just have the alarm going off for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> my ears ring. But I'm alive. Uh, <laughs> You're literally just calling the gorilla to you with that. He's same with him. the same with the snakes. I feel like the snakes. Wait, you just you... hit like a light boom. I just hey, full of that plan. I'll press then, down or up, go down an upper ceiling. level, and then while it's halfway, I'll hit the alarm, so it stops right there. So there, you, there's no one to open it. What if what if the elevator? <laughs> huh? He'll be able to swing to that so easy. Swing to what? <laughs> the elevator. You think he's gonna get in the duck? His that big ass gorilla. <laughs> Yeah. What, hi, man. What if it's a uh, and I got Auntie Annie's? I'm chilling. A glass elevator, so it can see you as you're going up and down. Oh, it might be able to break sucks. through the glass. I know, but there's a there's always a staff elevator. Idiots. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have like access that. to. You need a staff. Oh, tonight so we're staff. changing the rules. I mean, you're acting like we you, can't get the, the staff whole elevator. mall. We have the whole mall to ourselves. Where is there staff elevators in the mall? Green Hills Mall, second floor, far right. Oh, Swear to God, we'll go there right after this, dude. We will go there right after this. <laughs> Hit up and get out where the Starbucks too. is. Hit the escalator down. Walk all the way across before you turn left. Keep going. There's bathrooms, and in front, and right before you turn to the bathrooms, there's an elevator. You're welcome. Somebody, hey chat, take a video of that chat. Do we have a? This is like a little bit of a hide and seek too. Like, do we have a chance to go like find a good spot? Yeah, oh yeah, I think found, so. And then it gets released. 
I think oh, that, so. You get some time. So you get some time because uh, I'm thinking like start on opposite sides of the mall. Opposite sides yeah, of the mall. You both okay. Enter in and then it's 24 hour starts. Yeah. yeah. Sprint to that anti antis. You know the gorilla's fucking coming. Yo, what? Why do you want anti antis? <laughs> There's people in there serving you. He loves anti ants. What if yeah, you like find like a, so fire? a bunch of bananas or like some food for the gorilla? Yeah, you just start. You become him. friends with the gorilla. You use his adrenaline against him. Yeah. Facetime the gorilla. How's the gorilla yeah. say I love He's you? Banana. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Facetime. <laughs> become boys. Uh, yeah. Go hunt down snakes together. Now you're winning on all ends. <laughs> I like that. Even though we've already asked that question before. We have. But I figured Q, he'd be good. He'd be good with that answer. Yeah. Maybe there's a dispensary in the mall. You just like be like, here you go, man. Get him high. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm so you just took this angry gorilla and you just or Snickers bar, mind. like you're not yourself when you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Have some of this, bro, brother. That's a. I feel like you're great with hypotheticals. You're a big hypothetical. That's a big offensive line characteristic to have. Is playing yeah. the hypothetical game. Yeah. Should we do shoutouts? Yeah. Before we jump into shout out, no free shout out. This segment is presented by Duke Cannon. It is the off season, boys. That means it's time to elevate your game by working harder and smelling better with our friends at Duke Cannon. Upgrade to Duke Cannon for a varsity level grooming routine. Duke Cannon scents are elite and their products are made from hardworking dudes like yourself. This right here is my favorite bar of body soap, the big American bourbon soap. It is an oak barrel scent. Um, Again, they have face routine stuff, they have lotions, they have everything you need to treat your masculinity the right way. And as always, the boys got a special code just for the tier ones. Use code tier one, that is T-I-E-R and the number one on DukeCannon.com for 15% off your first order. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. Now, to uh, shout out, no free shout out. Do you know shout out, no free shout out, yeah? Yeah. The small things in life. Yeah, he just said he knew. Yeah, 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 I just... Start with you, Mitch. Um, my birthday was this weekend birthday. on Friday, so shout out, no free shout out, just kind of having the day to yourself and like, I'm not one who normally likes all the, like a massive party or anything or like needs to do something extravagant, so just kind of having like a low-key birthday, just you, you see the people you want to see, you're around the people you want to be around with and you can do whatever you want to do, so... Shout out just having your birthday and being able to do what you want. Nice, man. Uh, my shout out might come back and bite me in the ass, but the Vols forced a game three last night in the College World Series Championship. They play tonight, which will actually be yesterday. So I'm praying to God that Tony V has these boys dialed in. And so my shout out just goes to the Vols, working hard all year, and to Tony V, a friend of the pod. So. Friend of the pod. Yeah, shout out to Vols. My shout out, no free shout out, goes to the walls in high school, middle school, elementary school, those concrete walls. And I saw this on Twitter that you run your finger through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're walking across. Oh, nice. That's a good one. I saw it and I was like, God, I missed that. And I don't know the last time I've seen one of these walls other than They're in a school. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Shermie? Or go ahead. Were we no, Sherm, you. Yeah, Sherm. Yeah, All right. Pre-game spews. I uh, <laughs> I spewed this morning for no reason at all. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> I threw up. Oh, okay. I was brushing my teeth, and I think I was on the tongue a little too long, and I just vomed. But I like I feel locked in today. I feel good after that throw up. Really? Yeah. How it's great. You, you I, yeah. I was deep. I got pretty deep. Hygiene, very critical. Yeah. Good breath. Gotta do it. Sherm, sure, love the honesty and just like love your enthusiasm and happiness for throwing up this morning. It's, <laughs> Thank you, dude. It's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Those you. are good vibes. You brought it. If I were to go the school route, I think uh, my shout out, no free shout out, would be the one water fountain in the school that's like extra cold and it's got a good stream and like it's got that green on it, you know? It's yeah. like, Wait, it's like the we, best tasting one. What do you mean by green? It might have like a little mold it's on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 been, it's been there. The it's uh, it's stood the test of time, and um, it's just always there for you when you need it the most. Right after gym class, after HY basketball game, like whatever. Um, but uh, I'd say my shout out, no free shout out, would be uh, golf right now. I've been getting into that for the last uh, six weeks, and just been like 
enjoying it, hating it, loving it, um, doing it with my friends and just having a good time, uh, being out in nature. Mm. And, you know, whether it's a good round, the bad round, you're just the, the sun's out, you're around nature, hanging out with the boys, having a good time. Vibing. And, um, you know, who, who's got it better than us? You know, no, you just, oh, ju bye. just got a 10. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You just scored a 10. Like, you're having a great time. Doesn't matter. I like that. Especially the water fountain. One. I like the water fountain one. Yeah. What you got? Oh, you want me to go? Yeah. Um, shout out birthday barbecues. I think there are such a, it's a, such a low maintenance, cost effective, awesome way to have a birthday. Taylor's birthday is June 21st. Her cousin Chase, his birthday is June 25th. So this weekend we did a little, uh, a little barbecue birthday at our grandparents' house. And it was just, you know, grilling meats, hanging out, throwing a pigskin around, just overall great vibes. And it was just, it's easy, man. Who, who is yeah. on the grill? You're not going to believe this. <laughs> Taylor's mom marinated the meats and I was joking about, Hey, I'll grill, I'll grill. And then they put my ass it. on the grill. They put me on there, but I definitely made somebody watch me the whole time. Cause I got nervous. Was it fun? The end. Yeah. I had a good time. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I might have to get into that smoke in the meats game. I know you've been in that mm. for a while. It's a fun game. Yeah. I've been going, going back and forth. With Kusa and I might get some tips and just start diving in. Yeah. Rock that pellet grill a little bit. Yeah. Get after that little Traeger piece. Let it have a little fun. I don't know what my shout out is. That's you've had six people go. I know. How many shout outs do you think you've given on the bus? Two hundred and eighty-two. Too, <laughs> too many. No, and just because of, I, I think of some, and then I feel like they've already been used. <laughs> shout out our victory in beer games championship of the world. <laughs> yeah, speaking into existence, man. With my boy Brad in town, we were up till probably midnight last night reminiscing on some old stories. So I'll say, uh, when your old friends come to town and you're staying up late, reminiscing on some old stories, having some laughs, having some, hey, do you fucking remember this? And then you kind of get sparked up like you forgot about the story and then it just takes you back to it. Uh, so yeah, that'll be my shout out. Also, I know we've had it before, but ACs. Like it's getting fucking hot. It's hot. And part of me like big I, I hate the heat. I hate how hot it gets. And so I'm a big <laughs> fan of getting inside and getting in the AC. Yeah. Inside cat, man. Yeah, you know your boy. Specifically movie theater AC. Yeah. Going anything, to the movie in the yeah. summer, that's a shout out. You almost have to dress to go to the to the movie theater. Yeah, you a little hoodie on. Yeah, like maybe, maybe. I'll wear some sweatpants, get a little cozy in there because you know it's gonna be cold. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, maybe just bring it with you just in case. Yeah, maybe you're yeah. not wearing it. A just in case hoodie. Shout out to just in case hoodie. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That was awesome. Do we have? Oh, we got tier tongue. Yeah. Our yeah, we've been we've been excited about this one. Our tier talk today, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be fruits. Q, I know you're a huge listener of the pod, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. You're gonna start at three, paint us a picture of why you like that fruit, and slowly go up to your one. We're gonna take a couple minutes though and dive in. Make sure you just don't miss a couple. Yeah. Start us off, Will. No. You went last on the shout out. Go ahead, Q. I'll go. Um I'm gonna go tier three. Coconut. Interesting. Wow. I've been on a real uh coconut water. Um free shout out, no free shout out, whatever. Uh <laughs> Harmless Harvest coconut water. We have that at the facility. Been dominating those. Um, love that. And then I just love coconut in general. I think uh, it's uh, great to have in a smoothie. Great to have as a dessert. It's got a lot of different functions. Um, so that's tier three. Do I go to tier two now? Fuck. Yes. Um, tier two. I am going to go. Right, well, this is tough. This is tough. Um, but I think I'm going to go. This might sound stupid, but it's not stupid to me. Limes. <laughs> oh, oh limes. hell no. That boy making a pina colada out here. What you doing? Yeah, dude. I mean, a lot of versatility again. Um, you could put it in your water for flavor. Um, you could put it, squeeze it on top of food for tacos, chimichurri sauce. Um a lot of functions there. And then uh, I think li limes have other functions uh, for like gardening and keeping insects away, but <laughs> whoa, whatever. Um, and then number one, 
I'm just going straight off of taste. My favorite uh, fruit to eat is pineapple. Bro, Sweet. you're tropical as hell with that. Oh, that's my word. Yeah. I'll go first, tropical. I like, I like the pineapple. <laughs> my word is interesting. We my have to give tropical. words. Yeah. This is one word to describe how you feel about yours. About your tear talk. Boys? Oh, we're going? One word you give for how you feel about tear talks. Creative. Beachy. Interesting. You use the same as well. Was yours interesting? Yeah. yeah. Bottom heavy. Is bottom heavy one word? Hyphenated. It's a hyphen. All right, all right. Hyphenated. Just making sure. That was interesting. I like uh, what was throwing me off about it too was you're picking some fruits that have variety. They have versatility. Yeah. And that kind of threw me because coconut, I do love some coconut. Like in the slushies, bro, the uh, tiger blood. Oh, yeah. Some coconut going in the tiger blood slushy. Mm. Yeah. In the bays, those drinks. The BAI, coconut's my favorite drink. Yeah. Coconut Bye. is the best one. <laughs> like, it's my favorite. It might be my favorite drink right now. So that's where you kind of threw me. Fuck. That's complimentary fruit. Yeah, that's complimentary fruit, bro. You got to think like coconut's kind of like the celery of the fruit. <laughs> it helps out the most in every situation. But you're not going to just grab a piece of coconut and eat it. No. Celery not. sucks, bro. <laughs> celery sucks, right? It, it also has its function, you know. It, That's all we need it, to hear. It, it, That's exactly it, hey, what I need to hear. For texture and food, um, gives a nice crunch. I mean, come on, man. What about after having hot important. wings and you see the celery on the side? You dip that thing in ranch. Yeah, I never fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all wings, brother. Uh, <laughs> crush all the wings. Man, I'm don't really... even bring that celery. Don't even. You don't touch celery on the, no. on the wings? No celery, no I'm carrots. To be healthy, man. Just trying to. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time with this one, boys. Speak your truth, man. Mm. Man, I don't think peaches peaches don't make my list, bro. Them juicy peaches, man. I don't think they make my list. My honorable mention is going to go to these cute little bastards. They're called Clementines. Yeah, they're good. Them little mini oranges. Yeah. Peel it off and they have a nice sweetness. They have a nice burst. Tang. In your mouth when you bite down on them. Uh, so my honorable mention is going to go to the Clementine, the cute little bastards. Um, my tier three. And you changed the game on me with this one because you did coconut. Because peaches was going to be my tier three. But my tier three is actually going to be banana now. Because I think the versatility with banana, like peanut butter banana, like in smoothies, chocolate and banana. Yeah. Eating bananas. I'm going to go tier three banana. My tier two is going to be your top dog, pineapple. The juiciness and sweetness of a pineapple, man. You just, it's tough to beat. Mm -hmm. And it's only beaten by one dominating fruit, in my opinion. Like the alpha fruit, which is the watermelon. Talk about versatility there with flavors and the, the Sour Patch Kids. And you get the watermelon Sour Patch ones. Yeah. The Jolly Rancher. Watermelon anything just dominates the game. And I love, I love just eating when somebody slices up a watermelon. Or it comes, what is it, pre-chopped, just cold watermelon on a hot summer day. Holy fuck. And that's going to round out my tear talk. Thoughtful. Thank you. Clementines. Juicy. Solid. Incredible. Thank you, Jack. Deceived. I tell JP my pe the peach was. I'm like, damn, that's an argument for best fruit. Fire. Once I saw that list, I'm just thinking, man. Clementine? How did Clementine get the honorable mention over I the just, peach? I, I, you're right. You're not wrong about that. I just felt like Clementines never really get their place. They never yeah. really get their shout out. Their moment. And I do think they're a nice 
They're a nice little fruit snack. <clears throat> it is a nice little fruit snack. Um, my honorable mention is going to go to peach. I think, especially this time of the year, the old peach truck is out there in Nashville, Tennessee, and you see it and you almost slam on your damn brakes when you go. Get yourself a box of those things. Go through about a dozen of those in one day. I enjoy how juicy a peach is. The reason why I didn't make my list is how messy it is, but it's going to be very contradictory when I get up to my top my top slot. The emoji too. Peach emoji. Okay, <laughs> the emoji too. <laughs> um, my tier three is watermelon. Everything Will said about watermelon is incredible. The versatility of watermelon you can't beat it hot summer day have it there in a bowl everyone's chomping away at it you put some of that seasoning salt on there you put some tahini you throw that on top of it it just really is a refreshing satisfying fruit it is incredible my tier two is going to go to the always reliable pineapple we've all been to a party and in that party they put out a fruit dish yep What's the first thing to go in that fruit dish when there's the melon, the cantaloupe, and the pineapple? It's always the pineapple. And you're low-key racing to get there because no one really wants to deal with that melon and cantaloupe very much. Hell no. People do that when we got a couple hours in the party. Like, I just want to snack on something. I might as well just grab this. But really, it's the pineapple that sets it apart from everything else. I'm. It reminds me of sandy beaches. and gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling inside when I am taking down that pineapple. My number one is going to go to the kiwi. I think number one, you take the time to intentionally shave off that hair of a kiwi, get the thing all good and right, chop that thing up the way you want it. The only thing bad about it is you're going to wish you want to had more. It is so damn delicious. Even the seeds, they have like, they're just big enough to add texture to that gushy, delicious moisture of kiwi. That's what you're talking. Insane. Fire. And I don't think I gave a word for Will's. What was, what was your word for mine? I think it's great, but I'll, no, I'll say uh, fundamentally. Fundamental. <laughs> yeah. I see what yeah, do it. Fruitful. Not a whole lot there. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> yeah. I expected that from Mitch's palate. Tropical. Ish. <laughs> the kiwi threw me, bro. I think kiwis I mean, are so good, dude. Never once I'm thinking like, oh, we ran out. Like, I can't run out of this kiwi. I need more of it. I know. To me, it's a pleasant surprise when you open up the fridge and you see kiwi and you're like, I got some time. I'm going to take care of this and enjoy this little tasty treat. It's mm. the closest thing to candy, in my opinion, when it comes to the fruits. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what the best season is for kiwis? February. I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't know either. <laughs> I didn't know either, but I thought it was going to be something crazy the way you asked. Uh, I, need, I, I need to have one. It's been a October while. October through May. So, so I was not right. wrong. February. It's right smack in, in the middle. In the middle of that little yeah. boy, huh? That's peak kiwi season. <laughs> kiwis, man. Yeah, you don't mess with them? Uh, not really. I'm gonna get you one tomorrow before the games. That's gonna be like a good I'll game eat meal. them and they'll be they'll be I'll right. be like, oh, this is a solid little fruit, but never am I like, oh, I'm craving kiwi. That shit is so good. It's dude. Little furry pubes on the on the skin. Yeah. I'll tell you, JP. I feel like you and I we eat together quite a bit. Yeah, yeah we we. I think our mouths are similar. Mm, true. Kiwi, peaches, celery. Yeah, I mean that was yeah that was it. You guys do have some commonalities. Okay. What do we think, boys? Yeah, we got anything else with Q? Any questions from the back? Because I, I have one more. Go ahead. I'll wait, though. Do you guys have any? Go ahead. Now that you're a veteran, do you keep up with things like the top 100? No. Like you were a couple years ago, I think you were top 30. Mm -hmm. Last year you were nowhere you were nowhere on the list. Is that something you like watch and you almost just store in the back of your memory like they get that kind of gives an extra chip on your shoulder? No. Um it's not like a part of my why, like why I play the game, like to be on the top one hundred list, you know. Yeah. Do you ever it's catch like, yourself thinking about those things? And then I uh, obviously mm, having to quickly remind no. yourself, like, ah, oh, don't get caught up in this bullshit. No, I don't. Yeah. Impressive. Mm-hmm. I feel like I would think about that. 
<laughs> you don't think to yourself when you see the number there, you're like, damn, I wonder why they put this person over me. I didn't even, well, I knew I wasn't going to make it uh, last year, so I didn't even watch. So I have no idea what that list even looks like. Um, just focus on myself and like improving myself, you know? Self improvement. Yeah. Well polished, politically correct answer. You can tell you've been in the media rooms a little bit. <laughs> the one year you got second team all pro, were you jaded about not getting first? No. Who got it over you? Uh, I I think Petonio. Good ball year. player. Great. Yeah. Good dude too. Great ball player. Mm-hmm. That's all I had. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Bustle with the Boys. Please don't forget to subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and rate five stars. Big hugs, tiny kisses. No, you watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no.